Recently, we have been covering the origins of the Jedi and Sith Orders dating all the way back to ancient Star Wars history. Over the course of the timeline, their wars were fought on many fronts, first with the Jedi and the Dark Jedi during the Second Great Schism, which was essentially the birth of the Sith. While their wars always changed over time, one thing remained the same, their unique weapons of choice. The lightsaber. The lightsaber is one of the most recognized weapons both in and out of the Star Wars universe. It is known as the Jedi's weapon and was used in the order to fend off the evils of the galaxy for generations. But of course, the lightsaber as we know it is an evolution from the days of the Jedi Order, who originally used alchemically altered durasteel swords. But when did this change take place? When did the Jedi Order and the Sith begin using lightsabers? We'll stick with us today, curious consular of the galaxy, as we dive into the history of the lightsaber. We begin back in the days just before the first great schism, with the Titan invasion by the Rakadan people. Around this time, the ancient Jedi were using force-imbued swords, which were essentially Dura-steel swords, with crystals fused within them. They were often constructed in the Ver Tepe. The Ver Tepe, or the Forge, was one of nine temples of the Jedi Order located on the verdant world of Tython. A large metal structure, the Temple of Ver Tepe was located along the mouth of an active volcano along with the Tythos Ridge. A place of study, students learned the ways of the Force through metallurgy and the construction of tools as well as weapons. Soon, the first landing of a ship other than the Tho Yor came to Tython. Inside was a Rakadan man by the name of Kesh. As a quick side note, the Rakata, also known as the Builders, were an amphibian humanoid species. They were a technologically advanced race that developed early in the galactic history, even developing some early hyperdrive technology. Long-term use of the dark side of the Force corrupted their society and turned them into a race of merciless warriors. The Rakata used their potent Force power technologies to conquer and, and enslave every other species they came across throughout the known galaxy. During the reign of the Infinite Empire, they were characterized by their cruelty, savagery, and arrogance. They were known to strip entire planets of their resources, terraform worlds to fit their own shifting needs, to kill entire slave workforces, and to eat the bodies of slain enemies and even members of their own species. They were basically the first empire in the galaxy's history that the Jedi put a stop to. However, it was difficult to do this to a select few of them, these beings known as the Force Hounds. The Force Hounds sought out planets with populations strong in the Force for their masters. They did this by casting their mind outside of their body to observe and scout other planets for their masters. The Force Hounds were pitted in fierce survival in broods, where only the strongest survive. Trill and Kresh were two known Force Hounds, with Kesh serving Predor Tulkar and was considered to be the most skilled of all of the Force Hounds. The Force Hounds carried dark side weapons called Force Sabers, which can be accredited to being the precursor to lightsaber technology. However, use of the Force Sabers were banned due to their tendency to corrupt the wielder with the dark side. Later, the Jedi would experiment with freezing laser beams to create their own lightsabers via frozen blaster energy. The earliest known successful lightsaber, known as the First Blade, was created by an unknown Jedi Master prior to the First Great Schism. During the Schism, however, they would still be using their Force-imbued blades, as the technology of the First Blade was still experimental. The Jedi later developed a method to generate a focused beam of energy, leading to the first portable high-energy blades. They came to be known as Proto-sabers. However, these preliminary lightsabers were highly unstable and inefficiently guzzled energy from a belt-mounted power supply. This power supply, which was connected to the protosaber via a cable, and they could only be used for a brief duration of time before ultimately overheating. As a consequence of these flaws, the first lightsabers were little more than ceremonial objects, seldom worn, and much less utilized. Later on, a new protosaber would be constructed by a Jedi Master who wished to see the technology reach its full potential. The resulting weapon, dubbed a Retro Saber, greatly resembled the original protosabers, but far exceeded its abilities. A retro saber was just as potent as a modern lightsaber, but offered a few advantages along with the disadvantage of an external power pack. The primary advantage was that modern belt-mounted power packs allowed for a brief power surge, creating a more powerful blade for a short time, and therefore a temporary advantage in combat. The power cable tended to restrict the wielder's movements in battle and prevented the usage of force powers in long-range telekinetic saber combat. However, despite the shortcomings, the highly stable 
stable blades granted them a superior advantage in hand-to-hand -hand combat against heavily armored foes, and saw a great deal of use during the period of the Hundred Year Darkness. Interestingly enough, it would seem that the Dark Lords of the Sith Empire were ultimately responsible for the advancement of the lightsabers, replacing the belt-mounted power pack with a power cell within the hilt itself. With this modification, the power cell would only expend power when the energy loop was broken, such as when the lightsaber cut something, solving the power supply issue. According to the Tendron Holocron, the Sith also created the schematics for the first double-bladed lightsabers, making the largest strides with the weapon in hundreds of years, with Naga Sadao's invasion of the Republic in 5000 BBY. In the subsequent start of the Great Hyperspace War, the technological innovations pioneered by the Sith Empire were brought to the Republic as well as the Jedi. However, the majority of Sith forces held to the use of Sith swords, while the Jedi continued to use the Proto Sabers, as they had not yet had time to adapt and implement these new designs within their order. With the Sith's defeat at the end of the war, modern lightsabers were adopted by the Jedi Order, and by 4800 BBY, they were almost universally utilized by the Jedi. Karnas Mur was the one who popularized the use of a synthetic Sith crystal in Sith blades, which saw the rise of the red-colored lightsaber. However, this would be temporarily abandoned during the reign of Exar Kun when the Jedi who turned on the Order would simply continue to use their old Jedi weapons to great effect, with normal colors such as blue and green, with the use of the red lightsaber becoming exceptionally rare. Once Darth Revan and Malak discovered and usurped the new Sith Empire during the Jedi Civil War, the red blade became the staple color and symbol of who is on the dark side, and the wielders of the dark side, and the color was even adopted to represent the Sith ideologies as a whole. In 3681 BBY, the resurgent Sith Empire invaded the Galactic Republic. The conflict culminated in the sacking of Coruscant in 3653 BBY. This forced the Republic to sign the Treaty of Coruscant that led to the Cold War. During the years of these two conflicts, the Sith Empire's warriors and inquisitors almost uniformly wielded lightsabers instead of Sith swords. Another typical design feature on Sith weapons was the usage of dual blade guards. The Jedi continued to wield lightsabers, and some Jedi adopted the dual bladed design pioneered by the Sith, though very few Jedi opted for this function, as the double bladed or saber staff was more indicative of an aggressive fighter and was usually discouraged among the Jedi, but not outright forbidden. Eventually, though, the Republic managed to reclaim its lost territory. During this period, lightsaber usage and technology remained largely unchanged, although it should be noted that the usage of naturally formed crystals from Ilum became almost universal among the Jedi, while the Sith continued to use synthetic crystals. This caused the variety of lightsaber colors to drop, as the vast majority of crystals that formed on Ilum took on either a blue or a green hue. During the reign of Khan's Brotherhood of Darkness, Sith apprentices were provided with stock lightsabers rather than having to create their own. After the institution of the Rule of Two by Darth Bane, this policy was ultimately reversed, and apprentices had to create their own lightsabers, although synthetic crystals were often provided to them. However, a notable exception to this rule was Darth Maul, who self-fabricated the four synthetic crystals required for his saber staff after several days of non-stop work. Maul considered the creation of the crystals he used as a mark of Sith superiority over the Jedi. Speaking of superiority, many of the Sith would create these synthetic crystals via Sith alchemy, which they believed to be stronger than naturally occurring crystals, though there was another way of getting a red blade. This practice was risky and intense, and was known as bleeding. As you are all aware, kyber crystals are living beings within the Force and all living things can bleed. A Sith would take a crystal and meditate on it, pouring all of their anger, hatred, and suffering onto the crystal until it ultimately bled. When that happened, the crystal would be corrupted by the dark side and turn a red color producing a crimson blade. This process was risky because if not done correctly, the crystal had a good chance of exploding. Bled crystals could be healed with the light side of the force. When this ultimately happens, they turn white and produce the silver blades used most notably by Master Terra Sunube and Ahsoka Tano, with this occurring some time after the fall of the Republic. So friends, what do you think of the history of lightsabers that we went over in this video? Did you know any of this before this video? And comment below your thoughts on other videos you would like to see taken a look at within the Star Wars universe in depth. And as always, may the force be with you and